New Orleans Pelicans fans have been in misery for a few years now, but after last season, this team definitely showed some promise and the fans finally have something to be excited about. We know this team had an awful start to the year last year and it was such a weird year with the whole controversies around Zion Williamson and his injury and his relationship with the Pelicans, but towards the end of the year they played extremely well, showed a, a lot of young talent and definitely improvements on both ends of the floor. They end up squeaking into that eight seed through the play-in tournament, making the playoffs, and gave the Phoenix Suns a run for their money in the first round as well. And I think this team's gonna absolutely explode this year. I predicted in my standings predictions that they're gonna be a top five team in the West. Definitely a hot take with all the good teams in the West. The Suns, the Clippers, Warriors, Mavericks, Nuggets, Timberwolves and a lot of other teams too that are competing in the West but I think the Pelicans are going to explode this year just like the Grizzlies did last year and I think they're going to be a top five seed in the West this season this upcoming NBA season and today I'm going to explain why this team is going to be an absolute problem and you do not want to face them in 2022 and 2023 so let's get into the analysis. I'm going to start off by talking about Zion Williamson and the whole situation with Zion is so fascinating and controversial and interesting but I think the real truth is that people are forgetting how good of an actual basketball player Zion is. He has the potential to be one of the, the 10 best players in the NBA in every given year if he can stay healthy and that's just how good he is and how incredibly and sheerly dominant that he is on the floor when he's at his best. You guys know if you follow my channel that I'm high on Zion and I say this kind of stuff about him all the time and I've always believed him in, in him even throughout last season with everything going on but like I said the truth is he's such a dominant basketball player and now that he is fully healthy and and ready to go for the Pelicans this season who's to say that there's not going to be other injury problems but it does look like he is relatively healthy right now and if he can have a fully healthy season for this team that's already improving based off of the end of last year and was in a playoff spot without him throughout all of last season this is going to allow them to improve tremendously as well Look at what Zion was doing in 2020 and 2021, the last time he was on the basketball court. He averaged 27 points per game that year on 61% from the field, which by the way, 27 points per game is the highest points per game in NBA history for a player shooting over 60% from the field in that season, which is absolutely insane in his second year in the league. An overall 65% true shooting for Zion, which at that time was about 8% above the league average, and then also averaging almost 4 assists per game, and especially towards the end of 2021, we saw how he fit into more of a kind of point forward role with the Pelicans, where he was making a lot more plays, drawing double teams and triple teams inside, and sometimes just powering through and finishing, but also doing a great job of making better passes, becoming a better and more overall aware playmaker, and I predict that this year, he's going to average over 5 assists per game for the Pelicans and really develop that part of his game as well, especially because now this team has a much better supporting cast that they did when he was last on the floor, a lot better spacing and just three-point shooting surrounding them, and just a better overall offensive supporting cast around Zion. So I think that's he's definitely going to develop that part of his game, and just his sheer dominant scoring, the fact that he can average 27 points per game while shooting over 60% from the field is just absolutely incredible and when he is on the floor he's going to be doing that. I know there's always the questions about the injuries and he is big but most of that is just sheer strength and he's obviously going to be using that to his advantage on the court to dominate just like he was in 2021 and the numbers in that season don't lie and he's probably going to be doing something similar this season. Now, Zion coming back for this team is definitely very exciting and promising, but let's talk about the two core guys that carried this team to the spot that they got in last year making the playoffs, those players being Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. And let's talk about Ingram first because he definitely did a fantastic job last year of leading this team throughout the entire season. He definitely had some injury troubles as well, but still played a f relatively healthy season and still showed what he's best at a very smooth score who can create a sh own shot off the dribble and was also a pretty good playmaker last year as well did a good job penetrating kicking out to the perimeter 
almost a little bit fitting into the role that Zion was supposed to play on the team last year. Ingram last year averaged about five and a half assists, which was definitely a very good improvement and his scoring still showed that he's still a very good scorer, almost kind of reminds me of Kevin Durant, the way that he plays, sometimes turning around shooting jump shots and fadeaways in the post, getting to his spots in the mid-range area, being a good smooth three-point shooter, especially in transition, and getting to the rim when he needs to. Overall, he's just an efficient and effective three-level scorer, and last year averaged almost 23 points per game over the course of the whole season on almost league average efficiency in terms of true shooting shooting a 55 and a half percent true shooting and also like i said averaging five and a half assists per game and really being the leader for this pelicans team that they needed and then when we talk about cj i mean this guy just came in to this team after the trade with the portland trailblazers the team that he's played his whole career with and been a second option and absolutely exploded on the pelicans last year i mean it was so cool to see cj in a role where he was kind of the number one guy and wasn't second to dame because he had a lot more opportunities to have the ball in, in his hand create his own shot and just went absolutely insane he averaged o over 24 points per game last year in his 26 games with the pelicans and still shot almost 50% from the field, about 49.5%, and almost 40% from three, about 39.5%. Very impressive stuff, especially considering a lot of those shots were off the dribble. He's a good stationary three-point shooter as well. He operates well in the mid-range area, just like Ingram as well. And I'm very interested to see the roles that both of these guys play on the team this upcoming season with Zion on the team now. Because like I said, I think Zion could be a little bit more of that main guy and the facilitator and we could see a lot more of Ingram and CJ taking a step back in terms of their roles but still impacting the game in good ways because they can really space out the floor for the main guy in Zion get the ball shoot the three when they need to and also have some pump fakes get to their spots in the mid-range area still with a little bit more help from Zion who can draw those double teams and triple teams and you could see it the other way around sometimes with CJ and Ingram handling the ball as well Zion cutting and scoring inside like he does really well I think I would classify this as a big three I think the big three of Zion Ingram and CJ is gonna fit together really well they might have some issues at the start of the year just chemistry wise but I think overall the function of the Pelicans offense is gonna be really great to see and it starts with these three guys right here the Pelicans' depth has gotten a lot better as well. There's a lot of players to point out here. A guy like Jonas Valanciunas, who averaged 18 and 11 last year and still improved that three-point shot, was a good defensive anchor. Obviously, a great rebounder and your traditional big man that the Pelicans really needed last year. You've got Devontae Graham, who averaged double digits points last year, is a good playmaker, averaged about four assists. He can be kind of that secondary type of point card off of the bench for them and space the floor as well for some of the main guys and that's something that really stood out for me overall with the pelicans as a team is how their spacing has gotten better and that's definitely a big key uh, we look at a guy like Jackson Hayes, who hasn't really shown a lot of his potential yet, but I still does, do think he has potential to be an electric big man. Very good inside sco interior score and have some, bring some energy and some rim protection defensively and be pretty good in transition. We've got a guy like Trey Murphy, who didn't do a lot in his rookie season, but is still developing. And he's a really good three-point shooter as well when he's at his best. We saw him in college and just other times that he's played with the pelicans he's shown his good three-point shooting he can be a good floor spacer and a pretty good defender and then really there's those two big role players that really just stood out for the pelicans last year and it's because of their defensive efforts and energy and the, these guys are jose alvarado who of course became a little bit famous because of that sneaky steal move that he does when the pelicans score a bucket and he gets that steal in the backcourt but really he's an incredible overall defender as well we saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with chris paul in the first round and really trying to get in his head and be a little bit of a pest he's a great interior defender can always match up with your with the other team's best point guard 
And then you've got Herbert Jones, who literally made an all-defensive second team last year as a rookie, which is unheard of. He's an incredible defender. He can pretty much guard the other team's best player every night. And these two guys here were vital in the Pelicans defensive improvements and I think that that was really one of the main keys for the Pelicans last year it definitely is their defense and especially these two guys because the offense or at least the offensive potential has always been here for this team ever since they got Zion they've always had promise and hope on that end of the floor and it showed last year getting CJ the th three-point shooting and spacing getting better but the defense has always been the question and last year they ranked 18th in the league in the regular season in defensive rating which obviously still isn't great in his middle of the pack but a big improvement on the last few years and I honestly think that they're gonna get at least into the top 15 or maybe even top 10 defensively next year because first of all they have a decent defensive anchor now in Jonas Valanciunas who we saw last year and just the improvement and especially those two guys and Herbert Jones and Jose Alvarado and the defensive energy that they bring and how they can still improve as overall defenders I think that's going to have a huge impact on this team th this upcoming season as well so overall for the Pelicans you've got Zion coming back you're forming pretty much a big three offensively in Zion Ingram and CJ you have pretty good depth and guys that can fit into different roles and kind of fill the holes on your team that you need when it comes to offense transition play and your rebounding and defensively they have definitely some good improvements from last year some promise with some of their young players coming off of the bench providing some energy and overall this young core is looking really solid and like i said at the start of the video it, i think this kind of reminds me of the memphis grizzlies going from 2021 to 2022 and how they had that young core and just so many young players that fit into different roles that they needed to fill on their team and just all came together in one year because of everyone's individual improvements and every young player that they had and also just those team improvements really on both ends of the floor and I think with what we saw at the end of last year with the Pelicans and how they have Zion coming back and combined with everything else I've talked about in today's video about their young core I think that's going to happen for them this season and I think you th you could see this team win close to 50 games this season and improve on their 36 from last year and just absolutely explode and show Pelicans Nation that there's definitely hope hope for this young core so that's all the analysis i've got for you guys in today's video comment down below your thoughts on the pelicans going into next season and i'll see you all next video